What's doing, everybody? Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. I'm Alec Lace, and before I hit you with today's interview, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the link in the description so you can listen to all of the interviews I've done with so many tremendous dads, including Dana White, Deion Sanders, Tony Hawk, and so many others. Now, let's get going with today's interview. Joining me now, First Class Father, Kevin Mano. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Thank you, Alec. I appreciate you having me on. I, uh, I appreciate what you're doing, the show, and everything you've created is really cool. Yeah, thank you. It's great to have you here today. Let's start it like this. How many kids do you have and how old are they? Two. I have a daughter named Molly. She is three and a half. And then I have a son named Riley, uh, who's going to be two very soon. He's going to be two in May. All right. One and one. You're going to go for the tiebreaker here or are you all done? We're done. We're done. It was always <laughs> uh, It was always two and we got lucky with one of each and we are we are done. I'm ready for the old snip snip, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, did you guys uh, do any kind of like gender reveal or radio thing surprise uh, to find out what you have and you wait to the end? Um, yeah, no, we uh, we definitely found out we didn't want to be surprised. Um, and I do a radio show here in Los Angeles, which is what you're referring to. But my wife's um, social media, you know, following is uh, even bigger. That's kind of the uh, the focus for the family, I guess. So we did the gender reveals on on her Instagram and her blog and stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, you touched on it there. If you could, uh, please, Kevin, just uh, take a minute to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. I um, I am from Indiana, just right outside of Chicago, like northwest Indiana, real close to Illinois there. Um, and I, my brother and I both, my brother's two years older than I, uh, than I am, we both wanted to go into radio since we were little kids. We had an uncle that had a radio show, very successful back in the day. And so just going and even visiting him at different radio stations or he did some TV stuff, seeing all this stuff in real life made it seem like a viable career choice, whereas most kids might not think that way. We we both just sort of fell in love with radio at a very young age, so uh, we both went to school for radio uh, in the Chicagoland area, and we um, we landed at a radio station, the, the rock station we grew up listening to in Chicago, and we worked there. It was called Q101. It was an alternative rock station in Chicago. We worked there for a very long time, and then I moved on. I was actually sort of poached by uh, the folks at MTV to, to host their new daily live show out of Times Square, which I did for a couple of years. It was called The Seven, um, which was such a cool experience. It was like the old TRL studio there in Times Square. Um, so just like, uh, you know, celebrity interviews and stuff all the time. It was really, it was really awesome. Just living that lifestyle in New York is such a, a fond memory for me. Um, and then when that ended, I, I came out to Los Angeles. I had a couple uh, job opportunities out here to do some TV stuff. And I landed at uh, a radio station out here. It's 104.3 My FM. And um, I just became really close with the people doing the morning show. It's uh, this guy named Valentine who is, uh, he's been doing radio in Los Angeles for a very long time. He was, he was at Kiss forever and now he's, uh, he's been at MyFM for a number of years. And we do a morning show every day, five to 10. Uh, there's, uh, there's four of us on the show and uh, it's very successful. The ratings are, are good. People seem to like it. And we, I, I feel between my work life and my home life, I feel like the luckiest person on the planet. I really do. Yeah, very cool, Kevin. And you've had some tremendous success here. About about how old were you then when you first became a father? And how did becoming a dad kind of change your perspective on life? I was 33. Um, and it changed everything. I mean, it literally changed everything. The number one thing would just be, and I know probably this is a very common answer, but uh, I didn't even realize how selfish I was. Not selfish in a bad way, but you know what I mean? When you don't have any kids, you are your number one focus. You are your, your significant other. Um, but then I, so quickly you become your last focus when these, uh, these kids become number one, they become everything for you. So yeah, just really kind of, uh, it, it was a, a life changing thing for me in the best possible way. I mean, I, I wake up thinking about my kids and I, I spend every possible minute I can with them. Yeah. Well said. And how about, what are some of the challenges of doing a morning radio show while being a dad? To be honest, it is the best. I, again, I feel so lucky to even have the schedule. I know a lot of people don't feel this way, but I like waking up early. So I get up at three 30, uh, most mornings, um, and go to the gym for an hour before work. We have a gym in our building at work. Um, and that to me is very important. I don't know if it's going to be exercise for a lot of people, but I do think if you are a parent, you really still need to carve out a little bit of me time for yourself and self care, self help, all that stuff. And for me, that's an hour by myself in a gym. I'm lucky enough to be there at that hour. So I'm the only one there. I have this, my own gym to myself for an hour every morning. Um, and then, so I'll work out, I'll take a shower, I'll go to work and then I'm home by 1130 to get to spend the rest of the day with my kids. And I feel so fortunate that I, that I have that schedule. 
Yeah, that's awesome, Kevin. And how about what was the um, what was the transition like for you going from having the girl and then then having the boy? Um, we're sort of still figuring it out because now that he's uh, you know he's almost two, he's sort of developing more of that personality. Um, and a lot of people I've talked to have said uh, you know boys with older sisters are some of the like most well-adjusted human beings around because you know what I mean? They're just, they're sort of, uh, I don't know. They're, they're kind of, uh, just raised to be a little gentleman or something or, or understand that women run things as is the case over here in our household. Uh, so his, his personality is definitely a lot more aggressive. My daughter, Molly is very just like focused with her actions and everything she does. And she doesn't ever make messes and he just plows through everything and just knocks everything over. And, I guess that would just be the main difference so far that we've noticed between a boy and a girl. Yeah, we had it the opposite way. We had uh, our three boys first, and then we had our girl on the fourth try there. So um, we have uh, uh, three older brothers for our little girl. Man, that's crazy. Um, how about as far as, I know they're very young yet, but how about as far as uh, discipline uh, goes, Kevin? Are you like a spanker, a timeout guy with the three-year-old? Not a spanker at all. Um, no, I don't think we'll, we ever will be. Um, and we do timeouts. Honestly, that's an area that I struggle with because as she gets a little bit older, she's almost four now, uh, she is developing a, a bit more of an attitude. And I know that uh, um, the timeouts, that's something we want to stick with, but it doesn't always seem to work. So we're, now we're talking about getting into the consequences arena and we struggle with giving consequences and actually sticking to them which is probably a common problem for a lot of parents but that's where we are right now we I, I don't know if that means taking things away you know what i mean no tv at all this weekend that sort of stuff uh that's where we are now we're kind of trying to figure out how to how to discipline yeah yeah it's an on the job training uh yeah. deal for sure and uh, what about as far as bedtime goes, Kevin? Are you a, a lullaby guy? Are you sing it to them? Are you a storyteller or a storybook reader? How do you handle that? It goes back and forth. There was a while there where Molly, uh, she like, you know, it started off as like two songs every night and then three songs and then four songs. And then I was singing to her for a half an hour every night and I can't sing at all. But it was, uh, it went on forever. Um, I, that was back when she was in a crib, though. Ever since she got in her big girl bed, uh, it's just been a couple of books, which is nice. But she'll still occasionally want us to sing something from Frozen or uh, my personal favorite is the uh, the theme song from Fresh Prince. I don't know why I started singing that to her a while back, and that's still a favorite of hers. Um, and then for we're so lucky, both of our kids, uh, we sleep trained early on, um, which that would be huge advice I would give to any new parent uh, is sleep training as early as you possibly can. I don't even know anymore. I, you sort of forget all that information the earliest you can do that. But they both go to sleep at 7 o'clock. They're in bed, lights out. We never have any problems. They don't wake up until, you know, 6 o'clock, 6.30 the next morning. So we're very lucky there. Yeah, very cool. And you, and you mentioned earlier that your wife has the big Instagram following and everything, obviously, uh, on The Bachelorette. Was that, was, that ever, was that ever a show that you ever watched before meeting her? Is that Did you ever see the season she was in or no? No. I mean, I was familiar with the show. Um, I'm sure exes of mine would watch it and it would sort of be on in the background. I don't think I ever watched a season uh, and I, thinking back, I'm sure that I was aware of Allie just because I work in the entertainment industry and I'm on the radio and I'm on TV and I'm just like right now I know that Peter was the last Bachelor. I didn't personally watch the season, but I'm aware of this. So I'm sure during her season, I knew there was a Bachelorette named Allie, but no, I never watched it. And uh, I don't plan on going back to watch her in the hot tub with these <laughs> boots. It doesn't bother me. Like, I certainly don't care about that. We all have uh, have our pasts and exes and, and previous loves and stuff. Everybody should live life and experience everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll go back and watch. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. The, uh, cause my wife watches the show. I've had several of the, uh, of the bachelors, uh, on the show here. And it's just amazing the, uh, the amount of following and, and the success of that, that, that whole franchise there. Really? Uh, it is. I mean, people like Allie, my wife, you know, I give her all the credit in the world. Like they are fortunate enough to get this platform. Uh, and then they have, you know, a lot of fans out there and to sort of parlay that into, uh, a career is uh, honestly like a lot of them have, have been able to do it, you know, OK, but then some of them have been able to do it really successfully and, and build these brands. And I mean, that's uh, that my wife makes a lot more money than I do. And I'm, I'm proud to say that. And that's sort of our uh, our bread and butter around here. And I she she works harder than anybody I know. And uh, I just I help her out every chance I get. And it's really we, we feel very lucky that we're we're in the situation we're in. Yeah, and sometimes it gets a little overdone. Like I had uh, Ryan Sutter on the show here. He was the first ever, I guess you'd call him winner of The Bachelor. He was on the first season of that show. Yeah. And it got so, he was a firefighter in Cal Colorado. And people were like calling the fire department and fake fires just to see if he'd show up. Like, oh he was my. Getting a, yeah, getting a little crazy with some of this stuff. But 
Yeah, uh, that's a bit much. R- Rating it back into what you do now for a career, what kind of advice do you have for kids or, or parents of kids out there that are interested in a radio or broadcasting career? Because I know that the, the whole scope of the way we consume content now is changing. So what kind of route should a young, uh, a young kid take today that's looking to pursue that kind of career? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I've been asked that question a lot over the years. And as everything changes in our industry, the advice certainly changes. And now, I mean, it's all about podcasting. That's what everybody I even I work for iHeartMedia, which is this huge media company. And we have such a huge push to get into podcasting because that really is the future. It's it's shows you can take anywhere you want. Um, and with technology today, pretty much anybody can have a podcast from anywhere. You don't need a whole studio. You don't need that much equipment. Um, and as is the case with any creative career, whether it be music or stand-up comedy, it just takes practice. And like, I went to school for radio and I'm glad that I did, but now the way technology is like, if a kid wants to pursue this, this career, just start doing shows. Who cares if nobody's listening to them? Just do them, get the practice, interview your friends, your neighbors, your family, whoever about whatever you're passionate about. That would be another thing to find that passion. Like it's one thing to want to, to have a show, but if you can have a, a niche, you know what I mean, and have uh, a platform that uh, that nobody else is really doing. That right there is the uh, is the way to go. But mostly, it's just about getting the experience. And fortunately, these days, you you don't need anybody to help you get that experience. You can do it all by yourself at home. Yeah, it's amazing the way that the, the everything is. I know even the music industry, the way people are consuming music has completely changed. I've had several musicians on, and a lot of their bread and butter used to come from the music sales of the CDs and the and, and the albums, and now it's more from the live shows sure. uh, than anything right. and merch and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And getting back to you as a father here, what what are some of the uh, what are the biggest values that you're hoping to instill in your kids? Um, being nice people, being good people. That might be too uh, obvious or easy of an answer, but. Uh, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world around us and uh, maybe some of the negativity is amplified by social media and whatnot, but uh, there are just a lot of bad people out there, it seems, walking around. And if my kids can be, can be good people from the time that they are, I don't like that, you know, I'm still a relatively new parent, so I don't even know how this is going to go once we get there, but I want to see my kids in, in school, in, you know, high school, instead of being the bullies, being the one, reaching out to the kid that might be going through a tough time or be bullied and saying, Hey, come have lunch with me. Or, you know, I just want them to have good hearts and be good people and, and recognize the fact that everyone, everyone out there is a person with feelings. That's, uh, that's the number one life rule that, uh, I think everybody should sort of instill in their kids. Yeah. Good stuff. And how about as far as, have you guys gotten uh, comfortable at all yet? Uh, you know, having either in-laws or somebody babysit the kids for you and your wife to go out on a date night. I know that gets a little tricky in the beginning early on. Yeah, we're bad at that. We are, we unfortunately don't really have any family around. Allie's dad lives like three hours from us. And so he'll come by every once in a while, but mostly when he comes by, we want to see him too. So we don't really go anywhere. Um, we do, we're lucky enough to have a nanny help us out in the mornings. Um, so she will come by sometimes in the evening or on the weekends if we want to go do something, which isn't all that often uh, because the kids love her. Her name is Jessica and she's the best. Um, But uh, no, we, most of the time, if we're going to go out on a date night or something, it will be after the kids go to sleep. Nobody, this is crazy. This is the crazy part where we've been parents for almost four years, but nobody has ever put them to bed except us. And I wish that that's something we would have done differently from the beginning. If we could have had a babysitter or somebody, you know, able to get them to sleep while we were out because now we're kind of screwed like our, our daughter molly would probably freak out if we were like all right we're heading out you know so and so is going to put you to bed tonight that would probably really be a difficult thing for she's almost four now for for her at this stage yeah and i know that feeling too like when you when you leave the house without the kids it's sometimes you're like you you feel so like oh man like you know you, you shouldn't be out there like so i know that 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 yeah. you get that overwhelming feeling early on, yeah. especially. Dude, still, if we go somewhere, we'll sit there and we'll just talk about the kids and we'll you know, <laughs> yeah. look at our phones and show each other pictures or videos of the kids. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens. Well, uh, well, you've had so much success in your career already here, Kevin. What kind of goals or plans do you have here for yourself in the future? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think about it all the time. I'm so happy doing the radio show that I'm currently doing. Um, And I'm not, I honestly don't even know what is next for me. I don't know if I want to sort of get back into TV. Allie and I do occasionally talk about moving out of Los Angeles, maybe to the Midwest, be closer to family. Uh, So then, you know, I've got uh, some some emails going around with some bosses about potential podcasts. Like I said, podcasting is sort of the future of the industry that I could uh, get off the ground, which I would be able to do from anywhere 
Um, and I don't know, like as the as all of this media continues to change, it's really hard to say where I will be in five or ten years for any of us really that, that do this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would just like to think that with my experience, I'll be able to even if we picked up and, and moved next week. I'd be able to land on my feet. You know what I mean? I don't really have a long-term plan, which is maybe a little dangerous, but uh, that's the truth. Yeah, that's awesome, Kevin. All right, last thing I want to hit you with here, I'd love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Um, see, I, I don't know. I, there's so many things I could say, but I mean, just overall advice, which I feel like you give on your show um, based on what I know about you, is the dads are not babysitters. That is such a, a terrible stigma. Uh, Allie and I are 50-50 parents all the way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I don't ever want to come across as preachy. Um, but these are our kids. If you, if you are going to be a new father out there, um, I don't know. I even We have some friends where the dads are sort of like, you can tell it's not 50-50. The dads are distant. They, it's like this old school mentality where the, the, the mom is going to raise the kids and the dad's going to go off with his buddies and go golfing and stuff. Like I, that's very hard for me to wrap my mind around that mentality. And I guess to each their own. And again, I don't want to preach, but, uh, I don't know. Just being present is the most important thing in my life. Like I would rather be with my kids than, than do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. I love the message. Uh, this has been an honor for me. I got to say, Kevin Mantle, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time on first class fatherhood. Alec, thank you so much. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for doing what you're doing, man.